Okay, so welcome to the first part of my Seville vlog. Again, sorry for the shaky hand and the finger covering the camera. I'm here in Seville this weekend. Oh, because I'm running the half marathon, which I'm petrified, but I'm excited. So it's a bit of a mix. So I'll show you around the room. My dad booked this hotel for us. It's called the Hotel Inglaterra. Milo's coming with my mum and dad and they've left a little bed for him and some bowls which is nice. So you come round, that's all my stuff already. And the bed is lovely. Oh, I can hear church bells. And here's my view out of the window. Not much of a view, but better than England, isn't it? Can you hear the church bells? I'm not sure. It's the first time I've been to Seville. And then through here is the bathroom. And it is huge, absolutely huge for a hotel bathroom. So yeah. Yeah, so my flight was really early this morning. I had to be at the airport for just before four o'clock. Um, my flight was at about five to six, I think, but it was really easy. Um, from Seville Airport, I hopped on the, on the bus. That was so easy to use. I did read online though that there was a train station, got here and there wasn't. Um, but hey -ho, it's neither here nor there, I'm here now. And um, the bus was four euros, really easy to do if you're coming to Seville. And yeah, I just had a walk from the bus stop to the hotel and I've seen a little bit, but I'm gonna go, well, I'm gonna have a little lie down first and then I'll, I'll go back out and have a look and see what's around. But yeah, I'm glad that we've got a nice hotel. <laughs> Milo? Milo! Hey, darling, you can stay down. So, I've just got back from picking up my bib number and my t shirt. I'm in a different room. My mum and dad got here. They wanted the double bed, so I've got two singles. Um, so, yeah, it was a bright trek to get to the place. But I've got a bag of things. So, this is the t shirt. I've got a women's large, I'm so glad I did, because usually I'm a medium, but with my running tops, I like them to be a bit baggier. So it says Medio Marathon Sevilla. Sponsored by Hoka, Hoka, however you want to say it. So it's my t-shirt. I've got my bib number, which I'm going to have to put that under a book tonight to flatten it back out again. Um, My dad's number's black and mine's red, so I'm wondering whether that's because I put down on the entry form that I'm asthmatic, so... I don't know. And then it's got the timer on the back. Um, this has my number, 14478. It's probably going to be back to front view thinking about it. Oh, no, that's wet. And then I've got a tag. A strip with my number one. Don't know what that's for. thought it was for a bag drop, but it actually it doesn't glue so I don't know what that's for and then I got an energy gel which is absolutely massive that's 60 millilitres who's drinking all of that in one go I certainly won't be I've got the high five energy gels for this half marathon and it's bad planning on my half but I've not actually run at all with an energy gel before so tomorrow's going to be the first for everything and then it came with a shampoo sample. Oh, I thought it was a bar. It's not. Onion free smell. Enhanced with onion. Oh. That's weird, isn't it? So yeah, that's everything. We're smelling. That's everything that was in the bag. I'm starting to feel a lot more nervous now, um, mainly just because I, I just don't know how tomorrow will go. My training for the last two weeks hasn't gone to plan since I've been back in the UK because it's been so, so cold. And with it being so cold, it really plays havoc with my asthma. So yeah, we'll see how I end up doing, I guess. So I'm in bed. I've got my stuff laid out for tomorrow morning. 
I get mini eggs on the side. Half eaten. I'm not at all tonight. Done quite well. Um, oh. <laughs> so, yes. Um, what have we done? Oh, went and picked up the bib numbers. I think I showed that earlier, didn't I? Um, and then we've been out for some dinner. I had a big bowl of pasta. Um, and then nipped just to get some drinks on the shop. And, yeah. I'm all, I'm all ready for tomorrow. I'm sorry. I'm so shaky. I'm actually ready for bed. Fresh face. I've been up since... Well, I've been awake since two o'clock UK time, so I've been awake for ages, and I'm already for sleep. So I will speak to you in the morning. So it's the morning of the half marathon. I'm talking quietly because my parents are in the room next door, and I don't know if they can hear me. But yeah, I'm feeling good. Excuse the towels. Um, just want to get over and done with. <laughs> good morning. I finished. I will turn it around and show you. I'll, do, I'll talk more tomorrow. But yeah, ran it at 2.45. It was a really tough run. Home that I have been for ages. Um, yeah, it was way tougher than I expected, but I'll speak to you tomorrow and tell you more i'm absolutely shattered i've done over forty thousand steps today and i'm going for a hot bath <laughs> and bed so yeah i'll speak to you tomorrow so it's tuesday today um i ran the Seville half marathon two days ago Oop. oh god you see the bloody mcdonald's sign behind me but anyway i've just been and had my hair done so i'm feeling all nice uh, my body's not feeling so nice. My legs are in bits. My feet are so, so sore. It feels like I've got, I don't know how to explain it. I've got like a tennis ball or even maybe like a nail in the arch of my foot, which is really uncomfortable. But I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about the Seville Half Marathon. So we went, we left the hotel at half seven to get to the start line. We were in pen six. That took us a while to find. Um, because it wasn't very well signposted uh but yeah once we got there it was quite a long wait i think we waited probably close to 45 minutes to start so it did get cold and it was really busy with people people running past and you did get a few elbows in your sides but yeah so we started and the weather was perfect couldn't have asked for more perfect weather it was sunny cold to start with but then turned out sunny and nice and um yeah, I can't lie, I did have a couple of wobbles on the way around. Uh, just about 5k I had my first wobble because the, I don't know what you'd call them, the cars that come at the end to say like this is the back of the line for running, uh, they caught up to us and I thought my pace was okay, it was going exactly how, how, how I was training um, and I was aiming to finish in two and a half. So I thought I was doing okay, then I saw them behind me and I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. They've caught up to me already. Um, but my dad was like, no, you're fine. Keep going, keep going. We'll just go at a steady pace. Anyway, they ended up overtaking us. That just really made me feel not rubbish, but it didn't make me feel good, you know, being overtaken by, I don't know if you call it a pacer or what, but it was a Hyundai car, an ambulance, like three policemen, two bikes. So I thought, just let them, let them overtake. I'm still doing it, I'm still running. So yeah, I got to 10K. Getting to the 10K was the hardest part for me because it just felt quite long. It was, a, it was apparently the flattest course in Europe, but yeah, getting to 10K was hard. And then I just kept saying to myself, um, you've done the hard part now. You've got, you've got halfway, keep going, keep going. Um, 10k was the furthest I'd run in training that wasn't part of my plan but it's just how it ended up being so yeah 10k I thought you've done it keep going uh, we did see I, I, wanted, I was uh, hoping to see a lot of Seville while I was running but because I was so focused and concentrating I don't feel like I've really seen Seville um, but yeah I struggled at about 14k I walked for a little while my hands oh my god I look like Prince Charles right sausage fingers that was actually quite sore as well running with sore hands and fat fingers but yeah i got did it and then 
my dad sort of ran ahead of me. We stayed together the, pretty much the whole way and then he ran ahead of me towards the end, mainly to motivate me because I would just had enough like my fingers hurt my feet hurt um i'm not entirely sure what the muscle is at the top of your knee but that hurt too and i really just felt like giving up and then I, we ran past where we were staying it was hotel inglaterra a really nice hotel and um my mum was waiting there with milo and then when i saw her i just started crying but i thought no like as much as i wanted to go over and say hello i thought i need to keep running i'm so close to the end and at that point it was really nice because people who had already finished were starting to walk past me and vamos, vamos, ring, ring. And that was really nice. It was really motivating. And because my name was on my bib, people were shouting my name. And especially as I was getting closer to the finish line, a lot of people were shouting. A lady on a bike was cycling with me for a few minutes to help me. And she, <laughs> I don't, my Spanish, I can speak a little bit of Spanish, but it's not great. And the only thing I understood what she said was, cerveza, cerveza, cinque minuto. And I was like, she's telling me I could get a beer in five minutes. And oh, it was just so nice. And everyone was cheering as I got closer and I was giving it all of that and all of that to get people clapping. And I felt famous because I was like on my own at this last bit and it was just so nice all the support and that feeling across and over the finishing line is just one I won't forget it was incredible but yeah it was so much tougher than I thought when I was running around I was going oh, I swear I'll never do this again but I'm already thinking about my next one but for now I'm just going to focus on cutting down my 5k time and just running for enjoyment for a while and then and then we'll see later on in the year how I'm feeling what one I'll look at doing and go from there so yeah that was my Seville experience I'll see if I can put a few pictures in as well and yeah that's that's about it so Seville 2024 is complete